Hi, Dan. I think uh, we're ready to start the evening. Terrific. Music to my ears. That was Spielbergian. I watched that video, uh, it seems like five times in a row, and it was interesting and amazing every time. So uh, for the team that orchestrated that, uh, and I'm sure Marnie, Wendy, you had your hands in it, uh, and uh, probably you too, Marissa, it was uh, fantastic. Thank you so much. I can hear you through my computer silently judging my unimaginative background, and uh, that's okay. Uh, if I do any sort of fancy time, you know, stars or anything, it, my computer will blow up. I bought it from Sears in 1995, and so this is what you get. Anyway, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to Community Living Oshawa Clarington 68th Annual General Meeting Webinar. We would like to acknowledge that the land on which we gather is the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of Scugog Island First Nation. Thank you for being here. I hope you found the place okay and the traffic cooperated. The following anti-racism, anti-oppression solidarity statement was developed by Nene Kwase Kefele. We would like to observe a moment of silence to honor those who have led lives of service those who have stood up for social and economic justice have sacrificed so that we may be here, have confronted and dismantled oppressive practices and institutions, and have built affirming and equitable examples to inspire us all. So just a short moment of silence, please. Okay. You who stood against economic exploitation, homophobia, racism, gender discrimination, religious bigotry, and other oppressive forces, we stand on your sturdy, courageous shoulders. We thank you and we honor you. So my name is Dan Walters. Uh, if you weren't able to guess that from the name by my head that says Dan Walters, I love this organization and I'll say it like I say it every other year. This is my favorite community. I have a lot of favorite communities. Um, not that it's a competition, uh, but by a landslide, uh, this is it. Uh, this is it. And uh, I applaud the entire team. And you're going to hear from them tonight 
uh, and the volunteers and the participants. You know, with the pandemic, we talk about pivoting. I can't stand the word pivot. I used to like the word pivot when it referred to basketball. Um, but when I think of community living, Oshawa Clarington, you didn't just pivot. You pushed through. You, uh, you were resilient. You Hulk smashed through any barrier, really, that impeded uh, progress, social justice, and community. And for that, you have my endless gratitude and admiration. And it's nice to play a small role in what's happening here tonight. I'll stop blabbing in case you're wondering, am I chatty all the time? And the answer is yes, but let's get on with it. Um, most recently, I've been uh, named the honorary chair of Clock's fundraising cabinet. I guess I'll just let anybody join. Uh, and honestly, I am pleased to once again be acting as your MC uh, for tonight. If you heard me say Clock, that's an acronym, uh, Community Living Oshawa Clarington. So when we say Clock, uh, we're not talking about the time. Uh, this year, we're gathering virtually uh, instead of in person again, and we're thankful uh, that we have this technology to be able to do this. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege. We are even more thankful that we've all become uh, so much better uh, at using it. Uh, speak for yourselves. I've actually somehow uh, gotten worse over the, the last year, uh, and it is great with hope that we may return to in-person gatherings uh, soon. That's an understatement. I would like to welcome our special guest, Dr. Marilee Fullerton, Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services, MPP Jennifer French, MPP Lauren Coe, and the Mayor of Clarington, Adrian Foster, Chris Beasley from Community Living Ontario, and Cindy Dion from Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services. It is now my pleasure to present a video greeting from Dr. Marilee Fullerton, Ministry of Children, community and social services. Take it away. Minister of Children, Community and Social Services. Thank you for inviting me to share a few words at your annual general meeting. Community Living Oshawa, Clarington, has helped thousands of people with disabilities reach their potential and live meaningful lives in the community. And we are grateful for the work that you do. There's no doubt that these have been challenging times, and yet you continue to persevere and ensure our loved ones are supported. On behalf of Premier Ford and our government, I want to express our gratitude for all that you do and I also want to be clear that our government stands with you in supporting our most vulnerable and their families. And we are making the investments, including $240 million over four years. There's no doubt that children and youth with special needs and their families have been disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Have limited access to services, and this has resulted in delays that can have significantly long-term impacts on their health. This investment will ensure access to critical services. I have that like that. I can find it. It's like night in the School-based children's rehabilitation services delivered by children's treatment centers, and in preschool speech and language services. We're also investing $13 million over three years to assist more people with a developmental disability in accessing housing in the community, such as the Adult Protective Service Worker Program. This will support more independent living for more individuals, and we will continue to work closely with our partners on our long-term care plan to reform developmental services. Our plan is the product of extensive collaboration and consultation with people with developmental disabilities, their families and caregivers, service providers and other key partners. The message from this process was clear. People want developmental services that are easier to access with supports that are person directed and more flexible to better meet their needs over the course of their lives. Our government took a major step forward in making these important foundational changes when we launched Journey to Belonging, Choice and Inclusion. Journey to Belonging is our shared vision 
and maps a future where people are encouraged and supported to fully participate in their communities. And as we transition to services that are focused on the individual, I want to reassure you that we are being careful to ensure that we minimize disruption for those currently receiving services. We continue to have conversations with families and caregivers, individuals and service providers, and let them know that their voices are heard every step of the way. We will continue to keep personal choice and flexibility at the forefront of everything we do. There is certainly important work ahead, and I know that together we will achieve success for the people that we serve. Please accept my very best wishes for a productive meeting, and thank you again for all the important work that you do. Wowie kazowie, that was a, a, a fulsome video. Uh, Thank you very much, Dr. Fullerton. High five from Dan. Um, let's turn it over to someone ooh, who I really, really like. It, it's my pleasure to present a video greeting from MPP Jennifer French. the member of provincial parliament for Oshawa. Thank you very much for including me in this year's annual meeting. I know it's not the first time we've we've had to get together virtually. Um, I hope it's the last. I do look forward to when we can all get together in person and I can thank you in human form. However, I will take what I can get and I wanna take this opportunity to very sincerely thank each and every one of you to thank all of the employees, all the staff, um, the folks that wake up in the morning and not just do the work, but find that unbelievable way to care um, across the community. Thank you. Um, so many across the broader community don't understand the work that you do or how necessary and valued and valuable it is. Um, I, I certainly know that there is a lot, uh, a lot to be done in terms of advocating at the provincial level for the supports and services that you and others in your sector so desperately need to be able to do the unimaginable and valuable work that you do. So I will take this opportunity to recommit. Um, you know, I, I hear from I hear from your coworkers, I hear from you, I hear from uh, from your employers, I hear from everybody in the community how important this work is uh, and that you need different and better and stronger supports at the provincial level. I continue to do that work. Um, but again, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I miss you <laughs> and I would like to see you in person. Again, thank you so much. Um, I hope that you and your loved ones are healthy and well. There's so much uncertainty there has been, and you have you have done the heavy heavy lifting and the caring all the way through, um, which is unimaginable and so appreciated. So again, I hope that you have a, a successful and positive annual meeting. Thank you for everything that you do um, at work and broadly across the community. Um, it does not go unnoticed. So if you ever need me, please reach out to my office. But until we see each other again, stay safe, stay well, and thank you so much. Bye. Tremendous. Uh, I'd like to thank our caterers, uh, Del Monte Bananas. Sorry, what an inopportune time to take a bite of my banana. Uh, thank you, MPP French, uh, for your participation this evening. I'd like to now turn it over to yet another video greeting, this time from MPP Lauren Coe. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for taking the time to attend the 68th Annual General Meeting. Community Living Oshawa Clarington's mission speaks to the dedication and commitment of the staff, board of directors, and volunteers in enriching the quality of life and independent living of thousands of residents in the region of Durham. During this unprecedented time, I commend you for the difference you've made and continue to make in the lives of so many region of Durham residents. Best wishes for future success Thank you, and God bless you all. Tremendous. Thank you, MPP Co. And 
Mayor Foster, who we all love, I sincerely uh, adore and admire Mayor Foster. He's going to speak to us live and over to you, Mayor Foster. We do seem to have lost the mayor. He's muted, Wendy. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. Ah, there we are. Can you hear me now? All yeah, right. Well, uh, thank you for that. You know, I, I keep reflecting that these meetings are sort of kind of like a modern seance, right? Adrian, are you there? Adrian, can you hear us as we are all gathered around? But I'm so delighted to be invited uh, here with you. Uh, wow, what, a, uh, what an incredible milestone. And the work that you are doing in and on behalf of our community during the, the challenge during the pandemic is just absolutely awesome. Uh, I'm gonna look forward as everyone else is to uh, be greeting you uh, personally, three-dimensionally instead of two-dimensionally, but on behalf of council, on behalf of our entire community, thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you continue to do and I'm going to utter a threat. JC, if you make yourself scarce, we are going to hunt you down and find you and buy you a cup of coffee or whatever it is you want. JC, your involvement has been uh, so so deeply, deeply appreciated. Thanks all and, uh, and have a great meeting. Thank you, Mayor Foster. That was fantastic. So I, this guy's such a catalyst for anything great that's happening in our community, uh, there's a strong likelihood that Adrian Foster is behind it. Uh, you know who I haven't spoken about yet? And, and, and this is ridiculous. Uh, the stars of the show, make no mistake, uh, the clock participants are uh, the rock stars and certainly we are their agents. Uh, and so it's such a privilege to do that. If you're wondering who makes the magic happen, I'm about to tell you, our panelists right here. So you'll see some pic pictures of people. Uh, I'm going to introduce them uh, really quickly so you know who they are. So uh, Mayor Foster just uh, kind of tipped us off here to uh, Jean-Claude Legault, uh, JC, as most of you know him. He's the president of the board of directors. Then we have Mac Moreau, who's our vice president of the board of directors. And Terry Gray, that's Clock's executive director. And we have Joel Yell, whose birthday is today, uh, treasurer and chair of the finance committee. And we have, welcome to the team, Marissa Fortune Hall, who is amazing. Uh, she's a director of engagement. And we have my excellent friend, Marnie Salonius, manager of resource development and public relations. And I'd also like to uh, include our guests and presenters while I'm at it. We have Suzanne Nobes, Jen Mann, Ginny Forget, who we'll hear from later, and Debbie Marsh and Smith Chapel Marsh Villander, Clock's financial auditor. So let's keep the hit parade rolling. I would like to introduce Marnie Salonius, who will provide you with information about our Zoom webinar, how it works, and really importantly, how to vote. Over to you, Marnie. Thank you very much, Dan. As always, they give me the exciting part of the agenda. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Marnie, as Dan mentioned, and I just want to give everybody a little rundown of how to use the technology for this evening. Uh, during the evening, I will be watching the chat box uh, for any questions that may come up or uh, for votes coming in from members when we get to the voting segments. Uh, First of all, though, we're going to hit some housekeeping items. Um, follow along, please, with the demonstration on your screen. So everyone has been sent a package prior to tonight's meeting, if you registered. Voting members have been sent a package that includes instructions on how to vote during this webinar and how to ask questions using the chat button. If you have any questions during the meeting, please type them into the chat box. To do this, you need to put your mouse over the screen. Near the bottom, you'll see an icon that says chat. And when you click on that icon, a box will open up beside the screen. 
And at the bottom of that box, it says type here. And uh, once you click on that with your mouse, you can type your question in there and hit enter to submit your question. No one but the panelists will see the question that you've asked and nobody will know that you are the person that has asked the question. If you have questions pertaining to things outside of tonight's AGM, we do ask that you uh, leave them in the chat box and we can uh, answer them for you along the way via a private chat or um, you can certainly give our office a call if you have questions and we will ha be happy to direct you to the most appropriate person to answer them for you. For people who are registered members, meaning that you submitted a membership form for the year and received a voters package, there's an icon at the bottom of the page that says raise your hand. So when you are asked to vote, it's, it's a little like hand up in the air, um, when you're asked to vote, you can raise your hand if you agree. There will be a request for a motion from the floor and a seconder, and then a count will be taken for that motion to be carried. Uh, for the purpose of the minutes, I will be reading out the name of the person who's raised their hand to make the motion and the person who has seconded the motion. As we can all appreciate, technology uh, isn't always cooperative and can be sometimes unpredictable. So we just wanna give you a few tips before we keep going. Uh, if we happen to lose connection, please wait and don't touch anything on your computer. Often things will come back quite quickly, usually in less than a minute. You may see some or all of the panelists um, appear or disappear, but sometimes it just takes a moment for us to reconnect. If you think re you were disconnected because of a poor internet connection, you can log back into the meeting as many times as you need to. So if you get kicked out for any reason, please feel free to log back in. And if for some reason we lose connection and we are not able to reestablish connection within 30 minutes, we will call the meeting closed and we will reschedule for another time. If we are halfway finished the meeting, we will continue, schedule a continuation of the meeting for a later date and pick up where we left off. So I think that's all the really important stuff for the night. Uh, thanks, and uh, back to you, Dan. I'm not gonna lie, Marnie, I think you nailed it. That was very comprehensive and uh, dare I say informative. Okay, I will now invite JC Legault to speak. Well, thank you, uh, Dan. Thank you for your welcoming address. Uh, and again, agreeing to be the MC. You know, I personally look forward to the AGM every year and I'm not sure how many I've seen you in, but I like, I like it to see you in action as does everyone because you have a knack of making business fun. I just hope I could have invited you to all of my board meetings. So uh, before I forget, thank you again, Dan, for, uh, accepting to be the uh, chairman of our fundraising campaign. And I know that certainly has given you that a shot, the shot in the arm. And thank you for sharing your talents and your time for our benefit. You're well appreciated. On behalf of CLOCK and all those present, I'd like to thank Dr. Merrily Fullerton, Minister of Children, Community and Social Services, MPP Jennifer French, MPP Lauren Cole, and Mayor Adrian Foster for providing us with your inspiring message, messages this evening. I also want to mention a special thanks for Chris, to Chris Beasley, uh, President of, uh, of Community Living Ontario, and Cindy Dion, also of, of the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services, who are present with us, with us today. It's quite an honor. So we continue to be grateful to all of you for your ongoing support and advocacy for us in our community. So now let's get to business. First of all, I'll show you something. Since, since the beginning of my presidency, I always wanted to use a mallet and I never got a chance of it to use it. So I brought it today to be able to use it as it's my last meeting as president. So. Welcome everyone, my name is Jean-Claude Legault, better known as JC, and at least until later this evening, I'm president of the Board of Directors 
of Community Living, Oshawa Clarendon. So here it goes. I would like to call to order Clock 60th Annual General Meeting at 626. There we go. Did that work? I think so, I hope. Now on to the first order of business, excuse me. Those of you who are voting members of the organization will have received a copy of the members package prior to tonight's meeting. And it contains the 2021 agenda and the minutes of the 2020 AGM. So please keep in mind, if you are making or seconding a motion, uh, Marnie will identify who you are and, you, and, and that you are making or seconding the motion. Before a vote is taken, I will ask that if there are any questions or need for, for clarification. If there are, I'd appreciate if you could use the chat feature or on the Zoom program or a show of hand and the Romani will inform you of those. I remind you that when we get to the part of um, the vote for last year's minutes, that you must be, uh, you must have been present uh, for that AGM to be able to, to have a, um, a motion or a second. So after a brief pause, if there is no questions, the vote will, will, will proceed. And as Marnie mentioned, a show of hands will be requested for the motion to carry and it will be noted in the meeting minutes. So before we address tonight's agenda, I'd like to remind everyone that the Board of Governance Committee observed that there was tremendous progress made in, two, in, the, in the 2020 with the updating of the bylaws. So they've recommended that the bylaws now be reviewed every second year. So this change will free up time for both the Governance Committee and the Board to focus on matters at hand. If anything should arise that requires review of any part of CLOCK's bylaws, then it will be addressed immediately and we will not wait for the next review time. This is one of the many changes being made by the board towards continuous updating and improvement of CLOCK's board and board, board committees and is the reason that you will not see bylaw changes coming forward on this. Okay, so there we are. I will start now with the request. At this time, I would like a call for motion from the membership to approve the 2021 AGM agenda as presented. Looks like that motion was made by Brenda Kalinowski. Right. Thank you, Brenda. And I'd like to have a seconder, please. Judy Quayle. Thank you, Judy. Glad to see you. And uh, now, are there any questions or need for clarification regarding the agenda? All right, so as I hear of none from Marnie, I will now ask for the vote. So first of all, those who are in favor, please identify. Looks like we have the majority of our members in favor. Okay, so I will still ask, are there any against? And any one abstain? Okay, thank you. I guess, I guess there's none. So uh, the, the uh, motion is now carried. Uh, the agenda for tonight has been, has been carried, confirmed. Thank you. Now, Similarly, the voting members would have received a copy of the 2020 AGM minutes. So I would now like to call for motion from the membership to approve the minutes from the 2020 annual general meeting as presented. That motion was made by Paul Beauvais. Thank you, Paul. And now I request a seconder. Pauline Machette. Thank you, Pauline. And are there any questions or need for, for clarification?
I don't see any questions, JC. Okay, so I will then request that, could you please identify if you are in favor? The majority of our voting members are in favor. Okay, so again, I will ask, are there any against? I don't think we see any. And anyone abstain? Thank you. And so now I will uh, re request for the vote. We did request for the vote, I'm sorry. So uh, since now the vote has been confirmed, the, the motion is confirmed to accept the 2020 annual general meeting uh, minutes. Thank you. So now we will go back to Dan. Thanks, JC and Marnie. Super smooth, 68 AGM, who knew? Uh, I would now like to invite Terry Gray, who I've known and admired forever. I would go so far as to say this place wouldn't be as amazing as it is if it wasn't for Terry Gray. So Terry, I'm going to turn it over to you because you're the executive director of CLOCK. Thank you so much, Dan. Can people hear me? Did I unmute myself? Very good. <laughs> I want to thank you, Dan, for hosting tonight. You always do an amazing job. And as JC says, you bring a lot of fun to, to a business meeting. So thank you for that. And I'm so happy to see everyone joining us here tonight. It's uh, nice to be together again, even though we're not in person for another one of CLOCK's annual general membership meetings. Life does not always go as we anticipate it will. I'll take you back to September 2017. I was busy preparing my AGM speech back then, doing my final touches on my speech. And I'd been using my bedroom as a makeshift office to do this. And I had to leave for a few minutes for whatever reason. And when I returned, this is what I found. Sorry. I'll give that a minute. So, <laughs> My dog had eaten my speech. Um, so the reason why I'm telling you the story is twofold. First, I wanted to share, um, give you a little bit of a smile. Studies have shown that smiling releases brain chemistry that helps us feel good from head to toe. And it helps us uh, improve our mood, relaxes our body, and helps reduce physical pain. And a quote from Paul Chucks captures it just right, saying smiling is good for the heart and it Laughter is good for the soul and, and loving will keep you laughing, living and smiling. So please smile. The second reason I tell you this story is to highlight that life, life events shape us. The dog eating my speech, well, that gave me a lesson actually to be more careful, but also to be agile, quick on my feet and to recalibrate. Helena Banani once wisely cautioned to make life's events sh um, shape us, not break us. And this advice couldn't have been more vital as we moved to the spring of 2020. Little did we know um, at that point in time that our world would be turned upside down and in a blink of an eye, our world did change. And the past 18 months, the whole world has suffered. We've all experienced intense fear and we've all been tested in many ways. And what has transpired has really helped shape us to be resilient and compassionate and to take care of each other and ourselves, to be agile and to be brave and embrace life's many possibilities. It's really fitting that this year's theme for our annual general meeting is embracing possibilities because embracing possibilities is really about solutions and being focused in those solutions and moving towards, um, moving forward even though we're faced with uncertainty. And we've been faced with a lot of uncertainty. And we all continue to rise up and we continue to embrace possibilities together all around us. We've all we've all had um, we've all experienced many forces externally from us that um, have uh, placed situations uh, beyond our control, and we've all faced challenges. We've experienced changes, and sometimes many changes in one day. And through it all, I've been blown away to see the people we serve and their families share not only what they need, but they lend support and assistance to Clock and our employees to make sure that we're all doing okay, and that's really important. Thank you to those families for reminding us that you have confidence in us and we have your support, even with the challenges that we've faced 
And this support and confidence is really welcomed and appreciated and it really helps us keep going. So thank you for that. And to our staff who are working really, really hard, extremely hard for really long hours. This far into the pandemic, staffing is still a, a challenge and uh, they're away from their families for long hours. They have real fear in their hearts and they take personal risks and they work through outbreaks. These are true frontline heroes. So um, I'm, I've seen the sacrifice. I've seen uh, people sacrifice their own mental health at times because they are so committed to the people that they serve and they, they worry about them when they're at home, when they're not at work. So to our employees, thank you for your dedication, your bravery and the difference that you make. Thank you so much. And, uh, and we really couldn't do it without you. We've had losses, we've grieved, we still grieve, but nonetheless, we continue to move forward each day focused on healing and embracing those possibilities. Our board, our amazing board has risen up and they've been through what no other board before them has been through. And uh, I'm very proud of this group of talented and dedicated volunteers. Thank you for all you do to support this organization to move forward. And CLOCK is really proud of everyone who has helped to make the impossible possible, to help make difficult situations um, less difficult and more possible, and to ensure that every day counts in ways that we couldn't have imagined. So we really do appreciate all of all that you do. We've been through a roller coaster ride. We've weathered three separate emergency orders, locked down and stay at home orders. We've had uh, two false starts to recovery an unaccountable number of COVID tests waiting for results on pins and needles. And then when the negative comes, you know, the relief, the sheer relief. And then when, when it's positive, that crisis response and going into an outbreak type of situation. And then we've had the aches and pains from the COVID shots in the arms and thought we were maybe gonna see some light at the end of the tunnel. But what we really learned in this fourth wave is that there's really no easy path out of this pandemic. And during the pandemic, CLOCK's reviewed our programs and services, and we've embarked on a mission to make changes going forward that will be safe and ultimately more inclusive for people receiving services and supports. We've engaged in a co-creation process, along with key stakeholders, including some family members, people receiving services, employees, and some critical thinkers to help us reflect on how we can redesign our day services. Our principle for redesign are, is personal choice, individual supports, and community first possibilities. Our first priority group is the people that live at home with their families, as they've been most impacted through the pandemic, and we're busy engaging with those families and people to create individualized plans to see how we can support them through the, as we navigate through the pandemic. And we want to get it right, so we're continuing to engage with these people, uh, each family and person to concentrate on individual needs and goals. And we're really excited also about um, getting closer to opening our new respite home at uh, Ashley Court in Oshawa, and uh, that will provide respite to both adults and children on an alternating basis. And uh, we've been making some necessary upgrades to that location and improving the location. And we have plans for reopening a little later this year. And we're really thrilled about being able to offer more services at this new location and to help provide the community with some additional supports. CLOCK's annual report has always been a compilation of milestones and goals, and as well as stories of inspiration um, of people with developmental disabilities achieving their full potential, flourishing and succeeding, and truly, in, uh, truly being included. And as we reflect on the past year, we want to take this opportunity to thank our employees, our union QP2936, 02 and 03, our volunteers, our stakeholders, our many community partners, our family and friends, and people receiving supports for all that you do to support CLOCK. We're so grateful. Uh, another exciting development is over the past few months, we've created a new directorship position within the agency. And I'd like to, to introduce you to um, our new director of engagement, Marissa Hall Fortune. Marissa comes with a vast portfolio of knowledge and experience that, that will be sure to help provide CLOCK with support into the future. Over to you, Marissa. Thank you, Terry. And hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here at our AGM and I'm extremely excited to be working with CLOCK. Although I've only been here since July, I've had the opportunity to see some visions start to take shape in many areas of the organization. I've had the opportunity to be part of the planning and implementation, and I look forward to what comes 
after the implementation, the engagement, the ongoing engagement. Engagement to ensure that we are doing what we need to do, which is the accountability piece. Engagement to ensure that we are including who we need to, our people supported, our families, our staff, and engagement to make sure that we don't miss out on any wonderful opportunities in the community. I'm in awe of all of the wonderful and committed employees here at Quok. I it, it just, it, it blows my heart to see how devoted and committed our staff are. And some have been with the organization for many, many years. And over the last couple of months, I've had the opportunity to meet some of you and I can't wait to meet the rest of the team. I've started my visits out at locations. And so I look forward to meeting the rest of our employees and people receiving supports over the next few months. The director of engagement position is a new one for CLOCK and the creation of this position really captures our theme of embracing possibilities. My own background includes advocating for strong relationships between community agencies, their employees and the communities that they serve. And I bring this experience with me to this new role here at CLOCK. And as this role develops, it may change over time. And so I've started by assisting to reduce some of the workload um, that are on others. And so you may see me in, in many different areas of the organizations, um, tapping into many different pieces. Uh, but there are so many possibilities with this new role, uh, so many things that can be achieved, and I'm honored to be part of such a wonderful team, and I can't wait to see what the future holds. Thanks, Terry. Thank you so much, Marissa. Um, we're really excited that you've joined our team. We look forward to Fox exploring new inspiring possibilities around enhancing community engagement, and we know that the future is great. Thank you so much. Um, in preparation, as we look to the future, we're looking at the challenges um, and ensuring that we continue to be a strong, agile, responsive agency. Our journey has always been one of grassroots and together we know we'll be, we are stronger and that can't be more true than, than now. So we hope that you enjoy our special pandemic edition of our annual report and hopefully next AGM we'll be together in person. Back to you, Dan. I feel like a better person just having heard Terry and Marissa speak. That's uh, smarter, at least. Uh, that's just the way you will put together is excellent. And yeah, we're fortifying for the future, where a lot of organizations, NGOs are struggling, having a hard time and shrinking. Uh, we have the bravery uh, to grow and, and forward ever, backward never. And I think Marissa, uh, no pressure, you're a big part of that equation. And just the way uh, you weave your words together and the enthusiasm uh, is, is just so special and much needed for our community. So thank you so much. Uh, let's move on to the lighter side of the evening with the awards, beginning with the President's Award. JC, I'm going to hand it right back over to you. Okay, thanks, Dan. Uh, but before I, I go into this, I think uh, my fellow board members will attest that uh, Quite a few times I've made some mistakes and errors, so <laughs> and tonight is no different. So first of all, I'd just like to to uh, correct one thing. I introduced uh, one of our very special special participants tonight, Chris uh, Chris Beasley, and his correct title is CEO, Chief Executive Officer of Community Living Ontario. So here it is. I've corrected. Thank you. Uh, so thanks, Dan. Uh, well, the President's Award is given annually by the President of, of the Board of Directors to a team that demonstrates a commitment to the mission, vision, and values of CLOP. A team consists of more than one person working, working collaboratively to assist the person or persons to achieve their personal goals and reflects on one or more of the following. First, high quality service and supports which promote achievement of personal outcomes or organizational principles and assurances. The other, community involvement and the use of natural connections and supports to achieve personal outcome measures. Another, an environment that inspires, motivates others and or promotes leadership or people receiving service. And finally, honest, dedicated, and respectful working relationships. Because of our unique circumstances this, this year during the pandemic, 
we were not able to have the winning team come forward to receive a certificate of our appreciation. However, we will be able to send them out shortly. In the past, it has been the tradition of the president of the board and Terry Gray, who would take the, the winning team out for dinner. As this is not yet possible, we've changed our tradition and we will now offer the winners a gift. Now we'll now need, uh, name the teams in alphabetical order. First, Besboro, second, Olcan, and then Pinecrest. And those were not the, the winners in, in, uh, in order. These are alphabetical order of the entries. So here it is. And Dan, I think you're pretty good to give a drum roll. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Uh... Okay, are you ready? And the winner of the 2021 clock president award is. You're okay, I guess I hear a drum roll there somewhere. It's Pinecrest. Congratulations, Pinecrest team. Back to you, Dan. Way to go, Pinecrest. Did I totally do my drum roll at the wrong time? Did I interrupt? It's just, I'll, I'll never be hired in the big band, but uh, Stampsies, no races, it, what's done is done. Way to go, Pinecrest. Okay, congratulations on winning the President's Award. I would now like to introduce Marnie for the presentation of the winner of the Mark Forget Award. Hello, I am very happy to be uh, presenting the Mark Forget Award this evening, or talking about the Mark Forget Award this evening on behalf of the Forget family. Uh, the award was established in memory of Mark Forget, who clock provided services to many years ago. And it's given to clock's employee of the year, a person who goes above and beyond to enhance the lives of the people that clock supports. The following people were nominated for their outstanding work. Olivia Hill, Erin Perry, Prudence Nurse, Rachel Taylor, and Lori Kehoe. And the winner, Dan, drumroll, <laughs> is Prudence Nurse. We have some beautiful photos up on the screen here of Prudence accepting her award. She was presented the award by Ginny Forget, who is the mother of Mark Forget. And now I'm going to read directly from my paper, so please forgive me. Um, I'd like to read for you the nomination that was submitted about Prudence. I did not write this nomination. Um, I'd like to nominate Prudence Nurse from King Street for the Mark Forget Employee of the Year Award. Exceptionally committed to her job and the people she serves, she calmly but confidently sets high expectations for herself and for those she supports, and then as as each person meets these expectations, she raises them, which challenges everyone to continually improve. Concern for the individual's well-being drives everything she does. From the moment she begins working until the end of the day, Prudence goes above and beyond to ensure that she provides experiences full of natural learning moments. She's always willing to lend an ear when someone is in need and her gentle, and caring approach allows the people she supports to grow and learn. Additionally, the individuals truly enjoy their time with her. She is all about supporting them to have an active social life that they want. With the pandemic and social isolation in place, normal social activities have been halted. Prudence has gone to great lengths to find new ways to keep the individuals busy, entertained and engaged. She always tries to fill each day with meaningful and worthwhile activities. She did lots of research and developed a monthly calendar which included several virtual activities, such as karaoke, name that tune, dance inclusion, social bingo, oh, excuse me, social circle bingo, online Sunday service, and more. The people she supports also explore all kinds of great new attractions from the comfort of the vehicle and have explored many drive-through events and venues, which they enjoyed immensely. 
She sets the bar high in terms of work ethics. The people she supports, family members, and colleagues recognize her hard work, dedication, and enthusiastic personality. Prudence was nominated last year by the people she supports, as well as her colleagues, for the Blue Ribbon Frontline Worker Inspired Wreath Giveaway. Prudence received the most votes and won the challenge, which was very greatly deserved. What a great role model she has been. The families, people she serves, and her colleagues value her for who she is and the contribution that she makes to the team. Prudence is truly a valued asset to community living Oshawa Clarington. And I just want to put in a personal note, I can attest to all the great things that Prudence does in uh, working with the people at King Street because I get photos several times a week from Prudence about all of the neat things that they get to do. So congratulations, Prudence, well deserved. And we're back to you, Dan. That is heartwarming. Come on. That's, that's, uh, I'm glad I tuned in. Let me just say that. Thank you for the Forget family and congratulations to Prudence. And now, yeah, a little hand clap, JC, I saw that. And now we move on to the Clock Community Partner Awards. Each year, Clock selects people, organizations, or businesses that have gone out of their way to support its mission, vision, and values and provide opportunities for growth for the people Clock supports. This is a section in the program that always inspires me. When there's an opportunity to connect with the community partners and thank them for the opportunity uh, or, or for their contribution, I'm going to take that every day of the week. So our first community partner award is to Feed the Need in Durham, presented by Suzanne Nopes. Good evening. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Hi, I am very thrilled to be able to present the Community Agency Award to Feed the Need this year. Clock started a relationship with Feed the Need over five years ago. This wonderful organization is very accommodating not only to agencies that use the service, but to the people who are receiving the food donations that they distribute. Over time, we've been able to give a variety of fresh produce, fruit, canned goods, pasta, meats, baby formula, and even pet food at times to the families and the individuals we support. Feed the Needs open, is open to helping more than just your typical once a month when it's needed. This has helped us a great deal, especially during this pandemic when people have lost their jobs, individuals and families become more reliant on food banks. Staff at Feed the Need are amazing and we can't say enough about them. Our partnership between us and them has just grown over the years. They've assisted our staff with training, uh, especially on their new database. Uh, they're quickly to respond to any calls that we have and they're a very friendly smile when we go to pick up our donations of food. Um, they also do regular check-ins with our agencies, uh, so to make sure that there's nothing that we need. Both support services in our agency and our supported independent living program, utilize Feed the Need program, and they distribute all of the foods that we receive back out to the people that they support. Uh, you have to realize many of them live on a limited income and right now uh, with the rent the way it is, a lot of people put money towards rent, utilities, and there's very little left at the end of the month for food. So having this partnership between us and them uh, allows us to drop off food and, and be able to help people with nutrition, uh, healthy meals, and not go hungry. We're extremely happy that this year's recipient is Feed the Need, and we are totally blessed with that partnership. Congratulations, staff, volunteers, and everyone involved with Feed the Need. Brilliant. I see some claps. Well-deserved. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. This AGM has a little bit of everything. 
And again, very touching. So way to go. Uh, thank you. Feed the need. Our next presentation for a community partner award is to Augustino and Nancy's No Frills presented by Jen Mann. to congratulate Nancy and Augustino, co-owners and family of No Frills, located on Bloor Street here in Oshawa. With their help, our agency rolled into a new world of online grocery ordering. They ensured we had always been a priority to obtain groceries during this COVID-19 pandemic. This allowed for our agency to be able to feel confident that all homes would get all the essential groceries regularly and leaving more time and attention for our staff to provide support in an unprecedented world to those receiving services from community living. They continue to support us by meeting all the needs and sharing information which would benefit our agency. Having this connection and valuable resource does not go unnoticed. Our agency presents to Nancy and Augustino's No Frills, the Community Partner Award. Our agency thanks you for everything you have done and continue to do for us. You are a huge part in making it a successful year and a half. Thank you and congratulations. Yes, round of applause. Congratulations indeed. We are so fortunate to have great businesses like Augustino and Nancy's No Frills to support CLOCK. So thank you to all the remarkable people and their organizations for all they have done to enrich the lives of people with developmental disabilities. And thank you for all, uh, really, for attending this evening. Your support of Community Living Oshawa Clarington enables us to keep moving forward and ensure that everyone has a voice. That is the mission. Your contribution throughout COVID has been extremely generous. So now it's the honor of highest proportions to introduce you to someone who's celebrating a birthday today, Joel Yell, our treasurer, who's going to deliver the treasurer's report. Over to you, birthday boy, Joel. Hey, Dan, thank you. Uh, my name is Joel Yell, and I'm the treasurer on Clock's board of directors, and I'm pleased to be here this evening uh, to deliver the financial report. Uh, I'd like to begin, uh, first of all, by acknowledging that Debbie Marsh from Smith, Chapel, Marsh and Villander, our auditor for 2020-2021, is online with us tonight. So if there are any questions, uh, we can certainly um, call on Debbie. So if you'd like to follow along, the Treasurer's Report can be found on pages 8 and 9 of the annual report. It was uh, March of 2020, uh, the end of CLOCK's fiscal year, when COVID-19 became a part of everyone's lives. Uh, the worldwide a state of emergency was declared and CLOCK began the process of adjusting to the many needs that would come with the pandemic. CLOCK is pleased to present a positive year financially in spite of COVID-19. Revenues did increase uh, from $20,342,995 to $21,696,881. Expenses were higher over the past year with some costs and expenses uh, contributed uh, as a result of COVID-19. Please note that the excess Excess of approximately $116,883 is not an actual surplus, but is in fact gap or what we call generally accepted accounting principles. Uh, so they're gap entries with a portion converted to capital assets and accumulated unrestricted deficit. The Ministry of Community uh, and Social Services or MCC. SS, and my apologies, the Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services, MCCSS, is 93.8% uh, of CLOCK's funding as outlined in the Statement of Operations. The pie chart uh, does show the percentage of various expenses recorded throughout the year. Service delivery accounts for 94.91% of CLOCK's expenses, with an additional 5.09% for administration. As CLOCK has continued to grow and navigate through the pandemic, uh, the lean administration has been reviewed and additional resources have been added to ensure strength and sustainability. There have also been upgrades to several systems within the organization to maintain and improve efficiency and quality. 
So Clock's financial picture can be seen in detail through our audited financial statements and electronic copies and paper copies of the audited statements are available upon request. Are there any questions at this time? Okay, if there are I'm no questions. any. Okay, Sorry. thank you. Thank you, Marnie. If there are no questions at this time, I would like now to call for a motion from the floor to accept the treasurer's report for the 2020-2021 fiscal year. That motion has been made by Frank Cormier. Thank Frank. Thank you, Frank. And a seconder. Seconded by Crystal Minicious. Thank you, Crystal. And all in favor. And it looks like the majority of our members are in favor. Thank you, Marnie. Excellent. As I previously mentioned, Clock's auditor, Debbie Marsh from Smith Chapel Marsh Villander is here this evening. Are there any questions for Debbie? I don't see anybody typing at this time, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> Thank you, Marnie. All right, so now I'd like to call for a motion from the floor to appoint the firm Smith Chapel Marsh Villander as the auditors for the 2021-2022 fiscal year. I'd like to call for a motion, please. Uh, the motion will be coming from Kay Corbier. Thank you, Kay, and a seconder. We have Judy Quayle. Judy, thank you, Judy, and all in favor. The majority of our members are in favor. Thank you again, Marnie. Uh, at this point now, we will go to JC. Okay, well, I'm actually going to pass it over to Dan because I believe we're, we're now at the... Uh, at the board elections, unless I've missed something in the agenda. So I think that's the elections right there. Yeah, it is. This is strangely my favorite part of the evening. Uh, it just is. It's, it's just like ending with a symphonic blare. Uh, so these are the elections for CLOCK's 2021-2022 Board of Directors. To begin, the standing members of the board will remain. And in case you're wondering who those people are, it's J.C. Legault. Mac Moreau, Wayne Klinowski, Joel Yell, Crystal Manichas, Kay Corbier, Frank Cormier, Darlene Day, Amanda Ouellette, Amber Derby, and Julie Finesco. So can I ask for a motion from the floor in order to re-elect Mac Moreau for a one-year term on the board of directors? We have a motion from Judy Quayle. Terrific. Do we have a seconder? Amanda Willett. Nice. All in favor? And it looks like the majority of our members are in favor. Terrific. Technology, eh? What would they think of next? Uh, so thank you. We also have two people nominated to become uh, new members of the board of directors. Their biographies were provided to voting members prior to this meeting and can be found within your program. These nominees are Pauline Mechette and Paul Bove. So here we go again. Can I have a motion from the membership to elect Pauline Mechette and Paul Bove as new members of CLOCK's board of directors? We have a motion from Crystal Minicious. Terrific. Now, who wants to be the seconder? Kathy Garachi. Excellent. Thank you, Kathy. All in favor? And our members are in favor. That's good. I was waiting for those little uh, hamburger helper mitts to show up. Uh, way to go. So thank you. I would ask CLOCK's board members to participate in the installation of officers. 
You have been elected to an office of Community Living Oshawa Clarington. Our vision is for all people to be included in a community where everyone lives, works, participates, succeeds, and flourishes. I ask you, therefore, in the presence of your fellow officers and members of the organization, will you accept your office in this organization? This is the listening part. Here we go. If you will, please raise your hand virtually to show your acceptance and be recognized that you will and you promise to carry forward the responsibilities of this office. All right, I'm seeing virtual hands, I'm seeing real hands. Nito, okay, will you affirm, you can put your hand down for now. Uh, will you affirm again, your commitment to the mission of this organization? If you will, continue to raise your hand, your pledge yourself to cooperate in the achievement of objectives even beyond the responsibilities of your office. Hands up. This is going well. Okay, audience, you have chosen your officers for the upcoming year. They have pledged themselves virtually and in person uh, by raised hands in your virtual presence to carry forward the responsibilities of their offices. You must realize that only with your support and cooperation can they do this effectively. <laughs> will you join with your officers in affirming your commitment to the mission of the community living Oshawa Clarington? And will you pledge to them your support and cooperation for the coming year? If you so pledge, please, you know where I'm going this, please raise your hand virtually. There we go again. Well, that is slick. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, your 2021-2022 Board of Directors has been set. In this new world of technology, I must say this evening went exceptionally well. And before we adjourn this meeting, I just want to say again to the participants, um, not only um, do you always rise to the ch challenge, you, um, you know, I can't even say this without crying. I'm not going to say it. I just, I think you rise to the occasion and you very much are the occasion. And I never want to lose sight of that. I, uh, on Facebook and social media, I will check out everything that Marnie posts on a daily basis. And it's my pick me up. Uh, if you ever wonder, there's a small part of you that wonders, uh, is what we do matter? Does it have an impact? I would say it has an everlasting impact. There's an avalanche of goodness that comes out of each and every person on this call. Uh, right here today. And so never underestimate the power of your involvement uh, because it matters. Even when you think it doesn't matter and even when you think no one's noticing, uh, they do. And uh, that's immeasurably profound. So you have my heartfelt gratitude. So I would like to invite Terry Gray to come forward with a few words. Excuse me, Terry. Yeah. I, uh, as, are you going to talk about me? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Since this happens only in one's lifetime and clock, <laughs> my wife is in another meeting in, a, in the other room. She told me if they're going to talk about you, come and get want, me. Yeah, you, oh, go get her. Yeah. Me for, for two minutes. Please. Absolutely, we'll wait. <laughs> Take your time, JC. Now we can check out his background. What's he got? Yeah. People All the guitars are off the wall, though. Uh, <laughs> is that a picture I see in the mirror? No. <laughs> hmm. Not Ikea. I can tell you that. It's the good stuff. <laughs> Where do you have to travel? Oh, there he is. Ladies and gentlemen, my wife, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. Thanks for joining us. All right. So this is, um, this is a very special part of our uh, evening tonight. This AGM, we celebrate our board president, Jean-Claude J.C. Legault, uh, as he completes his two years term as, a board as our board president. Going forward, J.C. will fondly be remembered as the pandemic president. And we can't thank him enough for his steadfast guidance through all these troubled times. JC has been a staunch supporter of CLOCK for many, many years. Uh, he served eight years on the board and I believe about 10 years with the Clarington Project. And uh, it's with our deepest appreciation um, that we tribute JC tonight for all that he has done for CLOCK. JC now assumes the role of past president 
and uh, he's not really he's not thinking about leaving clock at least i i pray that he's not uh, he will we will continue to see him sitting on committees uh, acting as past president but also picking up other volunteer roles and as we start moving forward with in-person events again i know he'll be there to support us so please join us in viewing this tribute to jc Hello, my friends of Community Living, Oshawa Clarington. I'm so glad to see you again. It's uh, JC here. Hi, my friends. How are you? It's JC again. Hey, how are you? Glad to see you. It's JC. Can you recognize me? Hi. Hello, my friends. It's JC. Oh, hello. How you doing, friends? It's JC. Hi, my friends. How are you doing today? It's JC. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? It's JC. Yes, I'm finally back. It's been a little while. Hi, it's JC. Glad to see you again. Hey, hello, my friends. How are you? It's JC. I'm back again this week and to do another YouTube video so that I can be with you where you are and you can sing with me. Hi, it's JC. How are you? <laughs> Hi. What's your oh, name? Hi, it's JC. Hey, hi. It's JC. How are you? Hello, everybody. Bonjour, to no. How are you? It's JC. Come on, everybody. <laughs> we can do the twist and it goes like this. <laughs>
I'm JC Legault, and I'm taking steps to inclusion. JC, I want you to know how much we appreciate all your contributions at CLOCK. And personally, I need you to know how much I value and your support and your friendship. I know you didn't realize what you signed up for when you became president. And I, I, can, I can tell everyone here how giving and selfless JC really is. He, he gives not only to CLOCK, but his community. He, has, he takes on many, many volunteer uh, roles and he has many achievements that are exhaustive. And I won't get into those, but I do want to tell you, uh, give you a small glimpse of what an amazing man JC really is. Uh, when I went into, I had to go into isolation at the early part of COVID, and um, and that was when it was really scary. We didn't know how to get a hold of things, couldn't get couldn't get a hold of cleaning supplies, that kind of thing. And every day JC showed up in my house with a coffee for my husband, Tim Hortons coffee for my husband and myself. He'd drop off drop off our groceries, do Costco runs. He found us Lysol supplies, which nobody could find. So thank you for that. And I, you know, I can't tell you how much this meant to me. And uh, just that you were able to, um, you know, give so much of yourself and care so much for others. And I see it all of, in, in everyone that you've um, got to meet and become friends with at Clock. We really, we really are so grateful and so much better for having you in our lives. So thank you so much. Uh, JC and I were able to meet up yesterday and I was able to give him a, a part of his gift, a very small token of our appreciation and esteem. So JC, would you like to open your gift and say a few words? So what was the name of the person in the video? I kind of missed it. <laughs> okay, well. Hello, I'm JC. <laughs> well, yeah, but Terry gave me this to open. So what I did is I picked up a ceremonial clock official ribbon cutting scissor. And Elaine has to go because uh, she's being called at her other meeting. I'm chairing a meeting. So. Tell me that. What did I say? Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you, Elaine. Thank you. There's always a great, a, a great woman behind every great man, right? Okay, there you go. There it goes. Wow. Hey, look at that. So for those of you who can, can't see that, what it is, it's music notes. And uh, it says, JC Lego, the pandemic president, Cloud Board of Directors, September 28, 2021. And I would certainly like to know who is the artist. Turn it around, JC. Oh, look on. Oh boy, wow. Well, if I can catch my breath, I'll tell you who it is. Uh, this piece of artwork is created to you, for you, by Frank, a person receiving services of Community Living Oshawa Clarkson. So I will be sure to thank Frank. And uh, by the way, he, whenever I sing at uh, 97 Adelaide, uh, at, uh, I can't remember my numbers anymore, 947 Adelaide, he's the guy that sings about the gambler and he knows every word by heart and I have to look at his sheet. But I'm this really touching and uh, he'll have a special place behind me. You can see my bare wall there. Thank you so much. Okay, well, number one is I, uh, <laughs> although I love that video, I, I really apologize to those who might have had to stay a little longer 
and see so many pictures of GC. Well, I'm sure you know my name by now. And, uh, <laughs> and it's beautiful. So, uh, yes, I do have a few words to say and I'll, and I'll uh, try to get to them. And hopefully I can catch, uh, get that lump out of my throat and say what I have to say. Okay, well, thanks so much. Thanks so much for, for those who put together that, uh, that video. Last year, I was uh, jealous when I saw, not last year, two years ago, when Patrick was leaving, I said, look at all those pictures of, uh, of Pat Patrick. I said, uh, where did they get all those pictures? And then the other day, I was looking at saying, well, with the pandemic, we didn't take any pictures. So I don't think there's going to be any pictures taken. <laughs> so what, what a surprise. So anyway, uh, I really like to get a copy of that, and and, it'll, and I'll I'll uh, keep it as a souvenir as well forever and ever, show it to my family. So thank you, Terry, for your kind words, and uh, in return, I'd like to take the opportunity to acknowledge and thank you, especially as Clock's executive director. I've had the opportunity to work with you very closely, and also our friendship has continued to grow. Clock is fortunate to have its, as its leader someone with your experience, your knowledge, your skills, and such a caring disposition. A special thank you to Wendy Shaw, who professionally and patiently guided me through the administration portion of my, of my presidency. And thank you to the senior and leadership team and all of Clock staff for your help and encouragement. Thank you to all the individuals and families receiving support from Cloud for the great memories and pleasure you have brought me over the years. And thank you so much to the Board of Directors team. You have in your own individual way contributed to, to the board's success. You are also very talented and as a team work well together, using your skills to support Cloud, as well as the board officers and the chairpersons of each committee we are together with CLOCK's managerial leaders, second to none in, the con in this country's developmental sector industry. I started volunteering at CLOCK 12 years ago at, at the Claritin Project. And prior to COVID, I have great memories of sharing my music with people at various activity centers, accompanying friends from the Claritin Project at swimming activities. And I really miss, miss these sessions and the contact with the people served by CLOCK and I hope that I'll be able to resume volunteering again personally some way soon. Nine years ago I was accepted to the Board of Directors where I went through the ranks until I landed by fluke I guess as, as the President finally and uh, so here I am now. I will always refer to myself as the Pandemic President. Yes, during this time, we, we face tremendous challenges, but on the positive side for me, I was able to discover even more of the leadership, professionalism, dedication, and ingenuity of all CLOCK employees and the board in dealing with this unprecedented period. Now, as my two-year term is of a ter terminating, I'll remain on the board for one year as the immediate past of a president and I intend to continue to be an active volunteer for this wonderful organization as long as I can. I'd like to share something with you personal. <clears throat> One hopes in his lifetime that he will or she will find a job doing something they love. Well, for me, I had a great 32 year career with Bell and SNC Lavalin, which brought me across Canada and around the world. But I can't say that I really loved what I was doing. After my retirement, the first day I set foot at the Clarendon Project in 2009, seeing and falling in love with, with, the, with the people there, I realized that being a developmental services worker would have been the job I would have loved to do. So to you, the staff at CLOCK, I am in awe of who you are and what you do. Congratulations. And now I realize how lucky I am in my retirement. 
to have found the next best thing. <clears throat> I have the perfect volunteering medium in, a, in an organization that I love and more so with the people served by clock and my friends that I love so much. I intend to keep on doing it as long as I can and as long as clock will have me as a committee member or a frontline volunteer. As our evening comes to an end, I'd like to perform one final duty as president and introduce to you our new president, Mac Morrow. I've worked on the board with Mac over the past few years, and I'm confident that he's the right man to succeed me. It's funny, I always think to myself that I'm supposed to be mentoring Mac, and more than once has he been mentoring me. And uh, I've learned a lot from Mac over the last years, and especially the last couple of years as I spent time on the Board of Governors. There is a tradition at CLOG that we have a photo of the outgoing and incoming uh, coming presidents. We're not going to miss uh, keeping this tradition alive. I expect that photo is ready. So uh, as pandemic re restrictions we loose, were loosened, we managed to get this photo outside to carry on the tradition. Do you have that photo? <laughs> That's right. There we are. Mac, I didn't realize you were taller than me. <laughs> okay, so if you, oh boy, we hope. There it is, the tradition. Patrick and Gary Cook. Myself and Patrick, and Mac and myself. All right. So now, are the photos finished? Okay. So now, Mac, I'm going to do the ceremonial passing of not of the torch, but of the mallet. So here we go, Mac. You are now officially the president. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, JC, and uh, good evening, everyone. If I look tired to you, it is absolutely indeed because I am. Uh, two years ago in 2019, at this exact same time when I attended this meeting, I had one child. Last year in 2020, when I attended this meeting, my child count went up to two. And as of today, at this very same time, my child count has gone up to three, and I promise you that is it. Three is the max. But that is why I look so very tired this evening. Aside from that, for those that, uh, that have been to one of these before, uh, you may recognize me. Although today, I don't have the pleasure of orchestrating the absolutely best part of the agenda, which generally is the review of the bylaw amendments. Uh, in fact, as JC said, this year, we don't have... The video um, that was uh, posted about JC showcased um, my, uh, some of my most fond memories of JC, which is him playing his guitar. And most times uh, impromptu at our board Christmas dinners, uh, we would be gathered around and he'd pull out his guitar and we'd all sing carols together. So um, that, uh, that was very nice to see. I'd like to take a moment and recognize JC for his selfless contributions to Community Living Oshawa Clarington over the past decade. And I stand corrected, it's actually apparently 12 years in both his program and board roles. I've served along JC at the board for the last six years, and he has been a mentor and friend to me. So thank you, JC, for that mentorship and friendship. And thanks to Elaine for putting up with me, calling you and taking many hours of your time over the phone. I am passionate about Community Living Oshawa Clarington. Our mandate as an agency and the work that we do in the community. My uncle, Tom McKee, has been a community living client for the majority of his adult life and introduced me to the exceptional work that we do as an agency. It is with this mindset that I joined the, the uh, board of directors at CLOCK six years ago and have served in various capacities since as member and chair of governance, as vice president, and now coming into the role as president. And I'm honored and I'm excited to be taking on the role of president and look forward to serving the agency in this capacity. 
I would like to thank each and every one of you for joining this virtual meeting tonight. If there is one thing that COVID has taught us is how to overcome isolation by means of virtual platforms. It has also completely mind boggled the generations of people who didn't under the, understand the extent of technology that was available to us, and that includes myself. The last year and a half has been absolutely filled with trial and tribulation, and I am confident that brighter days are ahead. As Her Majesty the Queen noted in 2020, we will be with our friends again, we'll be with our families again, and we will meet again. And I'm hopeful that 2022 will mean seeing all of your lovely faces in person while we share a coffee and a snack and fellowship with one another. With that, I would like to declare the 68th meeting, a general meeting of Community Living Oshawa Clarington adjourned as our agenda has now been exhausted. And I wanna thank each and every one of you again for joining us and, wish you, and wishing you uh, all the very best. Good night.